Jacinda Ardern, Prime Minister of New Zealand, and His Excellency Antonio Guterres, Secretary General of the United Nations. I'd like to invite uh, Jacinda, uh, Prime Minister Jacinda Ardern to make her remarks. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining us. I'll make a few brief opening remarks and words of welcome, um, then hand over to the Secretary General and then open up for questions. Uh, first, firstly, I'd like to uh, uh, welcome um, the Secretary General with a warm kia ora koutou katoa. Uh, and an apology for the weather, uh, which given this is not your first visit to New Zealand, you're probably quite accustomed to. I know also you've um, uh, been welcomed with an official pōhiri before, um, but it was really uh, a pleasure for us to be able to welcome you here on the grounds of Government House today. Uh, we met several months ago, uh, just at the beginning of Leaders Week um, uh, last year, and during the course of our discussion, we spent quite a bit of time talking about climate change. And we talked about the impacts that climate change will particularly have on the Pacific. Uh, and at that time, I uh, suggested that a visit to the Pacific uh, would really uh, be warmly welcomed by the region, but also be an opportunity to highlight the impact climate change will have here. The fact that you have um, followed up that you are here is of great delight um, to us. And I think highlights the leadership that you are showing on the issue of climate change, and for that we are, we are very grateful. Uh, this week, New Zealand introduced into Parliament our Zero Carbon Bill. Um, in that bill, uh, we are amongst uh, uh, a very small number of nations now who are embedding the goal of no more than 1.5 degrees of warming into our domestic legislation. And one of the reasons for that is very much because of our region. Uh, we know that islands like the Marshall Islands, Kiribati and Tuvalu will experience devastating effects if we are not able to limit the warming of the climate um, to, that, um, to that range. Uh, and so that is just one of the reasons why this issue is of such great importance to us. I'm glad that while you're here, with your focus on the Pacific, you'll meet Pacific young people. Um, that you'll also hear a Māori perspective on environmental issues and climate issues, um, and that is of course unique to Aotearoa New Zealand. Um, I understand you'll also um, have an opportunity to uh, see our Refugee and Migrant Centre. We are incredibly proud uh, of the work that's done to uh, make sure that we successfully welcome and settle refugees and migrants in New Zealand. Uh, and at the heart of that is the settlement program out of our um, Refugee and Migrant Centre. And with your enormous background and advocacy in that space, I welcome the chance we have to show you a little, a little piece of what, we, of what we do here. Your timing also and the opportunity to meet with those who uh, uh, were victims of the terrorist attack on the 15th of March in Christchurch is, always, is also welcomed. Uh, I know that those um, who experienced that attack uh, will welcome the opportunity to talk with you uh, around the effects um, that it has had on New Zealand, but also the world. New Zealand was not unique in uh, the fact that we have an experienced uh, an attack of this nature, but what was unique to the world was the way in which it was designed to be broadcast in the way that it was. Uh, and that is why uh, New Zealand, alongside uh, of Emmanuel Macron, will be hosting a call to action uh, over the coming days uh, in order to seek change around the proliferation of violent extremist material and content online. And I welcome the chance to talk with you about that this evening as well. Finally, can I say um, to New Zealand, uh, multilateralism is hugely important to us. Uh, the strength of the United Nations is um, something uh, that will only be further enhanced through the reform program that you are undertaking. We support you in that. We thank you for your visit and we welcome the opportunity to meet with you. Kia ora koutou katoa. Thank you very much. Uh, Prime Minister Jacinda Harden, first of all, happy Mother's Day. Oh, thank you. <laughs> uh, this is a visit of both solidarity and gratitude. Solidarity, first of all, with uh, the victims uh, of Christchurch, with their families, with the community, the city, but also with the people and the government of New Zealand. 
every year since the times I was High Commissioner for Refugees, I do a solidarity visit during Ramadan, normally to a Muslim country. As Secretary General, I went to Afghanistan in my first year, to Mali in my second year. This time I decided to do my solidarity visit of Ramadan to the community in Christchurch to pay tribute to their courage, to their resilience, but also to pay tribute to the extraordinary unity mm -hmm. and to the message uh, of solidarity that was given by the people and the government of New Zealand. And I'd like to say how much I admire, Prime Minister, your leadership, the way you conveyed very strong messages to your country and to the world, the way you immediately took measures in relation to different aspects of gun control, and now your uh, call to action in relation to uh, the need to prevent the negative aspects of uh, social media and the internet in relation to hate speech is something that is, of course, very important for us. I've launched uh, two initiatives uh, to mobilize the UN system, one exactly to fight hate speech under the leadership of our Under Secretary General for the Prevention of Genocide, and another one uh, to be able to better support countries in the protection of holy sites uh, under the leadership of the Alliance for Civilizations. And of course, your appeals and your leadership are extremely important in this context. But it is also a visit of gratitude to express my deep gratitude to New Zealand for New Zealand's leadership in relation to the fight against climate change. And we are facing a climate emergency. Climate change is running faster than what we are. The last four years have been the hottest registered. We are seeing record levels, both in the rise of temperature across the globe, uh, in relation to the uh, rising level of uh, the oceans, and uh, of concentrations of greenhouse gases in atmosphere. And we are facing a paradox. We are feeling clearly by what happens on the ground that things are getting worse, even worse than it was forecasted, we see devastating storms, uh, the most recent one in Mozambique, uh, but they are becoming more frequent and with more dramatic humanitarian consequences. We see drought progressing terribly, namely in the African continent, in other parts of the world, and becoming a dramatic factor pushing for the movement of people and for the deterioration of uh, security and the progress of terrorism. Uh, and we are seeing everywhere a clear demonstration that uh, we are not on track to achieve the objectives defined in the Paris Agreement. And the paradox is that as things are getting worse on the ground, political will seems to be fading. And that is why the leadership of the government of New Zealand is extremely important, and that's why I'm very grateful for that. Not only New Zealand is fully in line with the, what was promised by New Zealand in Paris, but New Zealand is introducing legislation to achieve a fundamental goal that the scientific community has defined as absolutely crucial, which is to uh, reach the end of the century without more than 1.5 degrees, which means achieving carbon neutrality before 2050. Mm -hmm. And uh, your leadership, Prime Minister, is absolutely crucial in this regard, and I'm extremely grateful for it. And also grateful for what has been uh, New Zealand's support to the Pacific Island states. Mm -hmm. They are really in the front line of the dramatic impacts of climate change. I'll be visiting Fiji, Tuvalu, and uh, Vanuatu, and uh, uh, convey a very strong message from the Pacific to the rest of the world. We absolutely must catch up. We absolutely must be able to stop this dramatic trend, to reverse this dramatic trend. We cannot allow for a runaway climate change. We need to protect the lives of our people, and we need to protect our planet. Okay, we'll uh, now take questions from the floor. Uh, Jason Walls, New Zealand Herald. Welcome to New Zealand. Um, I've just uh, a follow-up question as to what you were talking about with the, the climate change legislation there. Um, the Prime Minister and um, Climate Change Minister James Shaw unveiled legislation this week which would um, have a split target essentially when it comes to gas. Um, biogenic methane would be reduced to 10% below 2017 levels by 2030 and by 2050 all other greenhouse gases would be reduced to net zero. So I was just wondering from your perspective, do you think that that goes far enough 
or and your general reaction to the um, legislation itself. We've got the whole biogenic methane target is 24 to 47 per cent by 2050 for biogenic methane. And so. that part as well. <laughs> Those are exactly the objectives that the scientific community as a whole, through the IFCC report, mm -hmm. have considered essential if we want to keep the growth of temperature until the end of the century uh, at 1.5 degrees. And there is today a consensus in the international community that if we go beyond 1.5 degrees, the consequences will be catastrophic. I mean, even with 1.5 degrees, we will have lots of problems, and we are having problems even now. But if we don't manage to have carbon neutrality in 2050, we will have a dramatic situation in the world. I see New Zealand in the front lines. I've seen uh, the government of Ireland proclaiming uh, a climate uh, emergency. I see many other countries gaining conscience of the need to act, but unfortunately, as I said, political will has been fading in other parts of the world. And we need, and this is the reason why we are convening a summit for September, we need to make absolutely sure that when countries will renovate in 2020 their national determined contributions, that they do it in line with what the scientists tell us is absolutely essential to preserve our planet. And I don't think that there is any other region but the Pacific with the moral authority to tell the world that the world needs to abide by what the scientific community is telling us. Sure. Uh, question two, Jackson Williams, Sky TV. Uh, my question's for the Secretary General, just uh, at the back here. Uh, just how confident are you of being able to convince world leaders to take a stronger action to tackle climate change based on uh, using and highlighting the experiences of the people in the Pacific when uh, many people within that region believe the government of Australia, the largest country in the region, is not taking the issue seriously at all. And you speak of political will uh, fading. Is, is that something that you've it's, noticed in Australia? It's exactly because some misbehave that the example of those that are doing the right thing is so important. And that is why I'm in New Zealand and I'm very proud to be here and to start my visit to the Pacific uh, uh, in a country that is doing the right thing and should be followed by all other countries in the globe. Cool. And uh, question three, Kay King, Television New Zealand. Just looking ahead to Christchurch call and the summit in Paris, mm -hmm. Prime Minister, obviously it's the cause you feel strongly about. Mm -hmm. And Mr Gutierrez, as you said, uh, you've spoken out before about the spread of harmful content online. Just looking at uh, how you expect to get meaningful change from mm -hmm. such a summit when it seems that some major countries and companies aren't on board. If I could um, start on that, uh, this summit was convened and has been convened only two months after the terrorist attack uh, in Christchurch. And in that time, we focused on uh, bringing together a call to action that will have really practical outcomes. Our goal is to stop what happened on the 15th of March and the aftermath online from ever happening again. So there are specific requests both of governments but also tech companies. Amongst those leaders that we'll have there, um, they are supporting the call. Uh, those are a group of core leaders who, um, by and large, uh, represent countries who take a similar philosophy and approach uh, to an open, a free and accessible internet that New Zealand does. And that was an important starting point. But that won't be the beginning and end of the call. We expect other nations are likely to sign up in the months that follow. In fact, uh, I'll take the opportunity uh, at the UN uh, in September to really follow up and continue to build momentum around the call to action. When it comes to the tech companies, uh, just yesterday I had an opportunity to have another follow-up phone call with Mark Zuckerberg in which he expressed support for the call. Facebook will be represented and will be supporting that call um, in Paris. Uh, having that support for the call, regardless of who represents the company on the ground is the most important thing so that we do see change and we do see action. If I may say something, I'd like to express my total solidarity with the, the initiative that the government of New Zealand is taking in this regard. Um, we will publish in June the recommendations of our high-level panel on digital cooperation, in which we gathered a number of scientists, experts, industrialists from all over the world uh, looking exactly on how to make sure that uh, 
the internet, uh, the cyberspace, artificial intelligence, and all these uh, other fantastic developments we are witnessing can be a force for good, and that we are able to address the risks that they really exist, that really exist today. If I would have to select the two biggest challenges that political leaders face in the world at the present time, I would say it's clearly to reverse climate change and second, to make sure that uh, the new technologies, uh, especially those that are related to the so-called fourth industrial revolution, uh, the cyberspace, uh, the artificial intelligence, that those new technologies become a force for good and not a dramatic risk for our common future. Uh, that concludes the press conference. Uh, please remain seated while the uh, Prime Minister and Secretary-General leave the room.